Let's start with section one, morphology. I think the first thing that we need to do before we move on to OCT assessment of morphology is to remind ourselves of the morphology of the normal human coronary artery. This is a human right coronary artery autopsy specimen, which shows specific layers of the artery wall, the intima, the media, and the adventitia. I'd like to analogize what each of these layers are like in order for you to put these into some sort of perspective when we start to do image interpretation. The intima, or this dark purple layer, is something what, like, like a hard sponge, perhaps something like you would use to wash your dishes. Underneath this is this sort of rubbery band appearance, which is the internal elastic lamina. And in fact, the rubbery band appearance is quite appropriate because the internal elastic lamina is indeed elastic. Outside of that is the media. And the media is something of like a soft rope, a rope that's tied together that you could easily end up splitting apart. Outside of the media is another rubber band, the external elastic lamina. And finally, this mesh type material is the adventitia. Understanding the hard sponge, the rubber band, the soft rope, the rubber band and the mesh will help us contextualize both the vascular biology related to interventional cardiology, but also image interpretation. And if we go ahead and look at this normal OCT cross section, we can see that we're able to see all of the layers that we can see on the autopsy with incredible detail. The innermost layer or intima, this hard sponge is this bright orange layer. Immediately under this layer is a darker sort of hazy black layer, which is actually the media or the soft rope. This is bounded on the inside, denoted by the red hash, and on the outside green hash, the internal and elastic lamina, internal and external elastic lamina, respectively. You'll also see outside of the artery is this sort of mesh type or hazy type appearance, uh, which is important as this is the adventitia. If we keep this in mind, essentially everything that you need to know about OCT guided image interpretation is present on this single slide. And if you ask yourself any time you see any OCT cross section, can you see the EL or the rope or the adventitia and the mesh? It helps us to determine what we're looking at. If you can see the external elastic lamina or the adventitia, the rope or the mesh, the artery is either normal or fibrous. And that's important because when you can see the rope or the uh, mesh all the way around the artery, this normal artery or fibrous plaque is an excellent place to land your stent. On the contrary, when there's segments of the cross section where you can't see the rope or the mesh, in this situation, there's a signal change in the lumen or in the wall. When it's in the lumen and it's high attenuation, meaning the light is absorbed, this is red thrombus. And when it's low attenuation, meaning the light hits something and it's refracted, it's white thrombus. When that signal of change occurs in the wall, it's high attenuation, meaning the light is absorbed, it's lipid. When it's low attenuation and the light is being refracted, it's calcium. And if you're ever, never, if you're ever not sure if something's high attenuation or low attenuation, you ask yourself, could you draw a line around the signal change? If you could, sharply demarcated, it's got to be calcium or white thrombus. Let's spend a tiny little bit more time on this concept of OCT signal attenuation because it's so important. And let's take the analogy that we've got a flashlight and a bowling ball. One of these bowling balls is completely black. The other one actually happens to be a crystal ball. When we shine a light onto the black bowling ball, the light is completely blocked and we're unable to see behind it. This is high attenuation. On the contrary, when we shine a light through a crystal ball, the light will hit the crystal and refract. So we're able to see behind the crystal ball, but the light is refracted or bent. And then if we start to look at OCT image interpretation, what we see is that when we go into normal artery or fibrous plaque, there's little or almost no refraction. And that's why we're able to identify all of these layers with incredible accuracy and clarity. However, uh, similarly, I should say, when we look at fibrous plaque here, we're able to see the media or the mesh all the way around the artery. 
we're able to see this rope all the way around the artery. And despite the fact that there's clearly intimal thickening here, this is fibrous plaque and an excellent place to land our stent. There's very little signal attenuation in this image. On the contrary, here in this image, we're able to see the mesh all the way from 12 o'clock to approximately 8 o'clock, and we're able to see the rope from about 12.30 all the way to 8. But from 8 till 12.30, we really can't see anything in this upper left quadrant. And that's because this is high attenuation. This is lipidic plaque. When we see a high attenuation in the wall, this is lipid. Here, we have another pathology within the wall. There's a signal change in the upper right quadrant of this cross-section. But in this instance, the light is hitting this object and then refracting. And you can still see behind this structure. And we can also easily draw around this very well-demarcated structure. When you have a pathology or signal change in the wall and it's low attenuation, this is calcification. If we hold those same principles for the lumen, when there's high attenuation in the lumen, that means all of the light is being blocked. When all of the light is being blocked, that's red thrombus. That's a near-infrared light hitting a red object being completely absorbed. Or when you have low attenuation, when the light hits an object but is able to see behind it, this is white thrombus. Simply, those are most of the things that you need to know to start image interpretation for OCT-guided PCI.